Yeah, okay, let's move on to the other game. Texas and Washington. Washington wins 37 to 31 in the Sugar Bowl. Um I I I'd talk first on the other game. What what are your initial thoughts on this game, Ashton? Okay. <laughs> Penix, that was the best. I I, I, I got to be careful here and not get myself into too much trouble. That dude was wild. Yeah. He was out of control. Um, I thought Texas, the whole story leading up to it was that Texas's young secondary would not be able to cover Washington's three future NFL receivers. Mm -hmm. I actually felt like Texas covered them very well. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it did not matter because Penix put the ball in places. The receivers weren't open. I'm not okay. They had some times where they were open. They like, you're yeah. not going to cover those guys completely tight all the time. But even when there was absolutely perfect coverage where Texas could not have guarded the guy any better, the ball just somehow lands like over the guy's shoulder. And it, yeah. like he kept on doing that down the sideline. There's a wild video on Twitter where he, where Penix, he's in the pocket. There's a defensive lineman that's coming directly at him, has him dead to rights. And he, he, he just makes him fall down. Like he does, he just gives him just a small little shimmy, makes him fall down and throws a dart on a, on just on a, a really nice wheel route to the sideline, perfectly layered in. Like there's not much you can do if you're Texas, yeah. like you, honestly, there's not much else you could have done. Penix finished. He was, he was, um, he had 29 completions, 38 attempts, 430 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> I and mean, it felt really, better than that. <laughs> and it was honestly really like, it was considerably better than that. It was it was incredible. It was the best quarterback performance that I have seen since I'm going to say 19 Joe Burrow, 2019 yeah. Joe Burrow. I that's that's what I felt when you have NFL players on the defensive line that are coming directly at you and you're making the miss in the pocket and then still keeping your eyes downfield and throwing darts. Mm -hmm. th there's not much a defense can do about that. There's really not like there's not really an answer for that. The defense won on that play. They would call that play a win for them. Mm -hmm. But you have one guy who just erases everything and makes a wild play. I, the, the announcers didn't quite feel it either. Like, as this yeah. game was going, I was like, are, are you not seeing this? That was crazy what just happened. And it was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, nice throw from Penix. And, it, you know, it was like, uh, we've never seen that happen. Definitely not in a playoff game. I thought it was, yeah, it was incredible. I'll quit talking now. Is I feel strongly about it. <laughs> no, you can keep talking because I – I might just say the exact same thing as you're saying. I was so impressed by the way he was absolutely dealing. And it was first, yeah, like you mentioned, he'll throw a deep ball that yeah. just comes out of the sky and lands perfectly, like right in the receiver's arms without him having to adjust his right. route at all. And then the next minute, he's lasering, like just firing a ball, like hitting a lunchbox, like – like that uh -huh. size of a window, just, oh, it's it's just a thing of beauty when he's on. And you mentioned it, those three receivers. And yeah, like, okay, so just a little bit ago, we were talking about the blue chip ratio for Michigan and Alabama. You can talk right. about it in this game too. Texas is in the 70s, and I think Washington is around like 36% or so. They're not a blue chip ratio team. If they were, no. if they win the national title, they'll be the first team ever in the recruiting rankings era to do it without being a, a – 50% plus blue chip ratio team. Right. If you have average talent, this is showing you what you can still accomplish with a really good NFL quarterback and three yeah. really good NFL receivers. And by the way, a really good offensive line and maybe the best play caller we got going right now in the country. And well, whoever calls the plays, be it OC Ryan Grubb, or head coach right. Kalen DeBoer, who is just a different kind of guy. Like, I don't know. Maybe he's just the next uh, – <laughs> say whatever name you want. Like, he doesn't feel like the same type of guy as Nick Saban to me, but maybe he's just the next great head coach. Um, because you got those ingredients. Somehow they make something beautiful, and it's really fun to watch. The – yeah, the the accuracy was was just incredible from Penix. Like you can have all the great play callers you want, but without that guy going off at quarterback, um, is yeah, like nothing else really matters. And 
one thing that I, just to touch on too, the I think the break for Washington was huge. The four week break um, yeah. that you get with no games. Washington was banged up. And people talked about like after seeing this game, it was easy to to react. Um, and and a lot of I think people blamed, especially there were certain media types that blamed people for not watching Penix. It was like Penix has been this all the time, and you're just not watching. It was like no, no, no. Penix was not this all the time. I watched right. a ton of Washington. He had a large stretch this season where he was clearly either banged up or not as confident. Had to be. He yeah. was not. He was not playing well. There was a large stretch of the season where he was not playing well. He used this time. Washington used this time. To, they got healthy. He was he was the best that I have seen him ever play. Um, yeah, it, it was really incredible for a team that couldn't really run the ball. Washington did not have much success running the ball um, at all outside of ironically Penix. Penix actually had a couple of nice scrambles, but yeah, they they were on they were on fire. It felt every time that every time that Texas got a stop on Washington, it was like they got lucky. Like something, they they really got lucky there because I don't think that they're going to be able to stop them, you know, long term here in in this game. And um, yeah, it was one little thing about the recruiting ranking. It's a, it's a really good point. I'm not backing off of it at all. I think that that the blue chip ratio it it matters. I think more than what people realize in yeah. in yeah in you know normal uh, CFP culture, but the offensive line for Washington was really good too. I um, mean, pass pro, they did not run the ball very well, but if we would have said before the game that, you know, one quarterback's going to get hit a lot um, and one quarterback's not, we would have guessed it to be, you know, Penix getting hit a lot by that really good Texas D line and you were staying clean. And the opposite was true. Um, yep. Washington got after yours and Penix was clean or if, if there was someone coming, he kind of just made a miss. So um, yeah, that happened a lot. I just don't, I don't have any anything else to say about how good Penix played. It was it was incredible. I agree with you. Everything you just said, um, Quinn Ewers, on the other hand, I <laughs> he he continues to kind of be hot and cold. Like it feels like that's yeah. been his whole career so far to this point. Um, I think he's a good quarterback. I also think he needs to come back another year. Um, yeah continue to sharpen his skills uh, dude texas almost you all this all this we've said texas came so close to winning this game uh they were going to get the ball back with like 10 seconds left and then dylan johnson gets hurt on a, on that third down run before washington's last punt and i know yeah. you 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 went to bed i went, I went to bed i was yeah. watching this and as soon as they show him like clearly hurt writhing in pain I was like, oh my, that is like so yeah. big because it was the situation where all of a sudden the clock stops for an injury timeout and Texas gets the ball back with, instead of 10 seconds left, I don't even remember what it was, but it was 45, I think 45 yeah. seconds. You can do a few things and, and credit to them. Um, they march down the field and then they get to the 12 yard line with three shots and it just looked ugly at that point. Um, yeah. In the last play. Somehow they managed to get A.D. Mitchell one-on-one. -on -one. Washington trusted that corner who got beat earlier in the game by by A.D. Mitchell on the fade, kind of the fade-ish type, type play in the corner of the end zone. Yeah. And then they tried it again, and Ewers just sailed it. It was really ugly. I don't know what he was doing other than that's got to be an incredibly difficult throw to make and an incredibly – yeah, you've never faced that type of situation ever in your life, and it's a lot of pressure, and he just – airmailed the throw and Ewers is a good quarterback he might even be the second best quarterback in the playoff but there's a clear <laughs> gap between number two and number one like yeah yeah the, Michael Penix is just on a different level right now Texas did not get that play that level of play out of him no um, yeah hmm. what about um what about Washington's defense what did you think of, uh Braylon Trice is the big story the two sacks and he's been yeah. kind of a consistent pass rusher all season it feels like even if he hasn't always had big numbers he he's he he feels like the name that you're always seeing pressuring the quarterback um, okay yeah so opportunistic i think sure. the fumbles the fumbles were huge if texas does not turn the ball over texas wins the football game they had those two big fumbles as they were driving texas ran the ball at will 6.4 yards a rush they were all over washington i 
and this lead maybe leads up to to like a little bit of the championship game preview. I don't know if Washington can stop the run. I really don't know. Now sure Penix can't. <laughs> like Penix can be really good. I think Michigan can run for almost whatever they want. Like yeah. this is I wonder, yeah, it's gonna be interesting just like game flow, like how this is gonna work out. Mm-hmm. But I do think that Washington's receivers, I think they can get open against anyone. I think they could yeah. get op- open against like the Bears defense. Um, like they're they're that level of good. But Washington's defense, they have a good pass rusher. They cannot hold up to to the interior running game. They really can't. Yeah. So I think that's going to be interesting going forward. Yeah, kind of a little bit of a preview of like, a, a, you know, on the Michigan game. Yeah, definitely a clash of styles in the title after it felt like both of the playoff games were kind of similar teams duking it out. Yeah. And I, I OK, I want to go back to Texas just a little bit. You could. <sighs> Tell me I'm wrong, but it very much felt like Xavier Worthy was not healthy. Um, he was out there. He, he was, was running not, around. No. But Texas made use of him all season long, well, the last several seasons, with all kinds of motion and just and throwing to him deep and throwing to him on the shallow cross. And, like, the guy is he, – he's got crazy speed that no one else on that team quite has. And right. it just felt like he was basically out there just – just as a decoy like it he it didn't feel like they could get anything going with him it's i think his some of his lateral stuff people have talked about like he wasn't like it was kind of noted that he was hurt and kind of goes to, like back to you know the was was that the big 12 championship game yeah. i think that he got ding that he got dinged in mm-hmm. um you know washington got healthy in the four weeks texas key player not healthy um i think pretty clearly i think a lot of people that watched that game would have told you that that he was not 100 percent. so yeah the the total yardage was interesting because the total yardage ended up being almost the same um washington had a huge advantage in time of possession which is interesting um in yeah. that game like like you don't really think of them as a ball control team and they didn't run the ball much but they threw like they were in like they just didn't throw in completions <laughs> like everything was caught so like at one point I think it was like twelve straight completions yeah uh, just kind of keep the clock moving so it was it was really impressive just a clinic from Washington.